What up, bros and hoes, beeps and creeps? This is Bodala coming to you live from the Overdome. Um, I'm here to do another game review. Um, God, that case looks nasty. Uh, just, you know what, let's just go into it. Bioshock. I'm doing this in spirit of the fact that Bioshock Infinite is coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, and I'm probably going to go get it uh, if I'm not... Uh, incapacitated entirely, um, which I might be, I don't know, um, so yeah, uh, like the rest of my reviews, this is full of spoiler alerts, um, do I already recommend the game, yes, uh, go out, get it, you can get it in a two-pack with Bioshock 2, I'm gonna be reviewing that immediately after this and uploading both of them, uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, so Bioshock, essentially, it starts off, um, your name is who gives a crap and you're you there's a plane accident uh... just crashes over the sea because that happens um, you learn later that it was you uh... because you've been brainwashed but i'll get to that um, so you have to find a place you end up finding uh... the entrance to rapture this this underwater atlantis like place that i think was a deterrent well not a deterrent but like a safe haven for uh, people who are trying to escape the possible Cold War, um, uh, because it was, like, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever, um, I don't know, I think everybody was just scared that there was gonna be a war, um, and so, yeah, everybody was like, ooh, let's go underwater, because that's the only viable option, um, so yeah, you find the entrance, this guy named Atlas is talking to you, he's saying, hey, alright, would you kindly go over there into that elevator shaft? Alright, now you're gonna go down to Rapture, uh, but there I can contact you better and help you through all of this, uh, mess and blah blah blah, right? And so, first thing that happens is, like, you see a splicer, cause the lights go out, you see a bunch of them, they're trying to attack you, um, all of a sudden they leave. Who knows why? I don't care. Uh, so they just leave. Um, then you're okay. You come across what looks like a weird vending machine and a syringe. And so what do you do? Just pss, immediately stick the syringe in your wrist, because that makes sense. And, um, yeah, then you can shoot lightning out of your hands, which I'm not entirely sure that you're not just, like, hallucinating terribly at that point. Because whatever was in that syringe, it doesn't seem like it was clean. Um, definitely was just lying on the ground next to a dead body. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's just just kind of like, pew, 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 I could shoot lightning, woo, and then all the kids are just looking at him like, what is going on? He's like, don't worry, I escaped the plane crash. And then everybody's just like, oh, God, don't let me, don't let me end up like that guy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not entirely convinced that you're not hallucinating the entire time. Because you pretend to be the only sane person, but really, well, it just ma it'll make sense later. Um, so th those are called plasmids, but he had no idea what that was. He just stuck a syringe in his wrist. Um, and now he can shoot lightning and then unjam doors with it, and that's kind of cool. Um, and you get a wrench, because why not? instead of a crowbar, like in Half-Life 2. Ooh, that's not the only thing it rips off of Half-Life 2, though. Um, there's also a plasmid telekinesis that's a lot like the gravity gun. It's a lot more convenient, but at the same time, it's totally a rip-off. Um, and you're thinking, why is telekinesis that much fun? It is. It's so much fun in terms of, like, Half-Life 2 and Bioshock, because in Bioshock, you could pick up anything um, and just chuck it. So, beer bottles, uh, ice spikes, anything, anything, even, even ice itself, like stalactites, you can just pick them up and just knock them into the faces of your enemies. It's pretty badass. Um, so telekinesis is definitely my favorite power in the video game. Um, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're caught in this whole thing, this post-apocalyptic society which is ironic because I think they were trying to escape the apocalypse. They ended up 
in one themselves in this really weird dystopian uh, present uh, or past, really. It's kind of stuck in the past from everything else. Um, so yeah, Rapture is full of a bunch of psychotic people who like drugs, um, much like our main character. Uh, and he doesn't really, he's kind of a voiceless protagonist, which is another, uh, thing related to Half-Life 2. Um, and it's hard to really love him because he doesn't really, unlike Half-Life 2, he doesn't have any good reputation, um, until you make one for him. In Half-Life 2, you just start out as, like, a renowned scientist, and then everybody relies on you, and that's kind of cool, but... You don't really have any credit, and you're just some stranger who found Rapture. Uh, so it's not... It's it's still immersive, though, which is fantastic. Um, but anyways, so Atlas is helping you. Uh, the guy who talks with uh, some sort of accent. I forget if it's Australian or Irish. Or maybe it's British, I don't know. I think it's definitely Australian or Irish, though. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely... I think it's Australian, specifically. Um, and so, yeah, you're being helped by him, he keeps telling you what to do, he keeps telling you, he tells you to kill a doctor, you kill a doctor, um, the whole while, and this, this just, whoosh, went past my head, he's telling you, would you kindly do this, and it's actually a brainwash technique, now, would you kindly actually makes you do certain things, um, so yeah, like, you're in no control, you just do them, naturally. You feel like it's your choice, but it's not, and that's kind of creepy, because you don't remember how you got to where you were. Um, but yeah, anyways, so you're also in the midst of trying to either save or defile these little girls, which I think that concept's really creepy. Um, these little girls are like necrophiliacs, they love dead people, and they drain their they're like juice they're like life juice it's called Adam they drain it with this spiky needle and it's kind of it is it's really creepy it just is um, and at this point this is another point uh, that just kind of proves your guy's a junkie because now he's like kidnapping and he's like, ooh, well, I need the power inside them. No, no, don't, no, trust me. I need to save them from their dark, mysterious, evil, possessive nature. It's like, you're just kind of kidnapping them. And then you're making a profit off of it. I'm not entirely sure you're not just crazy. <laughs> so he's stealing little girls now. Um... And the idea is if you save them, then they're, like, little girls again instead of, like, the... They're called little sisters, um, but they're, like, they're possessed, and they want to be necrophiliacs and such. And that's just gross. It's just gross. So, you can save them, or you can turn them into, like, a snake creature, and that gives you more atom. But if you save them... If you save three of them, then you get a present, and that gives you more Adam than if you'd possessed all of them. Um, so, uh, that's, that's a better option, I think. Because the other, the other way, when you take the evil path, then you're just, like, you're just absolute, like, devil incarnate, sort of, like, evil. And if you take the good path, you're, like, God on Earth, sort of thing, like, it's it's really kind of just completely two-sided. Um, there's no in-between, like, ah, you kind of chose to save them, but you didn't really You realize it was more about you because, hey, like, you don't know these people. Maybe you need to just preserve yourself. And maybe you could save a few in the process, but that's not necessary. But, like, they don't have, like, a neutral ending. They just have either you're good or you were the worst person in the world and you're a cross between Hitler, Stalin, and the devil. Um, <laughs> it's pretty, it's, yeah, it's pretty extreme. So yeah, like, um, then you face these giant burly guys, big daddies, who are completely disproportionate in terms of their body. And they're humongous, and they're so brainless that they just, like, they just charge you with a drill, and they just kind of walk around it really, really slowly. And, yeah, that's kind of it. 
uh, once you kill them, you can either harvest or save the little girl. And if you save them, like I said, that's a better choice. And then that lady helps you, and you... The would you kindly doesn't really work on you anymore. Later. Which, I, I think, like... I think the storyline makes more sense if you save them. Because that, that doctor lady shouldn't help you if you've been killing her little girls. Um, but Atlas keeps telling you, hey, you should just kill them. What did they ever do? They're not girls anymore. I mean, why even try and make them little girls? Sorry. One second. Ah, it's my alarm. Little does it know I stayed up all night. <laughs> I actually didn't. But anyways, um, so Atlas turns out to be this junkie, this Adam junkie, and he, uh... Yeah, he gets a ton of it just injected directly into his body, and he's so powerful. Um, and I wish I had plasmids that did the things that he did, uh, but I don't. Uh, also, yeah, you kill Fontaine. Fontaine is the guy who created Rapture. Uh, you kill him with a golf club, and it's brutal, and it's scary. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And you kill Atlas, and you're kind of like, ooh, we need to escape, because you always need to escape, and the place blows up, and... Yep. Somehow it's still there for Bioshock 2. So, yeah. Um, that's my review on Bioshock. Um. Yeah. Like, favorite, subscribe if you enjoyed. This is Bodala, signing out.